The 2023 edition of Layers of Fear is a remaster of several games into a single package with shiny upgraded graphics. It includes the original 2016 game, its sequel and additional chapters alongside a new framing story. Although there are five stories to play through, three of them relate to the original Layers of Fear game and the story of a brilliant painter and his family driven mad. The other two narratives are the story of an actor on a sinking ship and a writer in a sinister lighthouse. I never played the 2016 Layers of Fear so I came to this game ready for a fresh horror experience. Because Layers of Fear is a remake of several different games, it's actually hard to review this game as a whole. With such a diversity of stories, it's no wonder the Layers of Fear remake is a mixed bag. The Painter's Story is a genuinely chilling horror game. The others suffer from repetitive gameplay, vague puzzles and confusing narratives. Thematically, they're tied together with a sinister supernatural figure, but they're not so interlinked as to feel like a cohesive whole. It's also important to note that Layers of Fear is an extremely dark game dealing with themes of neglect, mental health, self-harm and suicide. It deals with these themes to varying levels of success, although it often relies on cliched storytelling to do so. And I think if any of these things are issues for you, I don't recommend this game in the painter's story, players explore the artist's house through a series of chapters that chart his rise and fall. Like many great horror stories, the house takes on the characteristics of the painter's psychology and the excellent environment design and graphics here amp up the fear factor. Each chapter of his story reveals more about his failures, both as an artist, a husband and a father. For example, chapter 4 explores his relationship with his daughter and these childlike illustrations cover the house's many rooms and it's when these graphics work in concert with the storytelling that the game is at its strongest. There have been plenty of games which have played with level design in this way like Kingdom Hearts or What Remains of Edith Finch, but I appreciated the way the house devolved over the game. Familiar spaces transform from cozy bedrooms to Asherian landscapes over time. Doors close and disappear, rooms change shape, objects transform before your very eyes. There was enough variety to keep me intrigued, although during the fifth chapter of the painter's story, I felt like the game could have been cut tighter. And that goes for the game as a whole. All five aspects of it, I felt were a little overly long for the mechanics that are here. And perhaps my fatigue with this story is because the painter's story doesn't go in an unexpected direction. Here the painter is your archetypal vision of a tortured artist and the story leans way too much on these tropes. It tackles his descent into alcoholism and the effect this has on his wife and child. His overdramatic narration opines how the art world doesn't understand him, especially as his work is overtaken by visions of the terrifying Rat Queen. Yet knowing the outcome of the painter's story also removes some of the tension from the follow-up stories, that of his daughter in The Inheritance and his musician wife in The Final Note. His wife too is a tortured musician torn from her love of music by a vicious accident. Her outcome is unfortunately grim and expected. Despite the reliance on cliches, the masterpiece left me with a genuinely unsettled feeling I haven't had for a long time. The actor's story is almost as long as the painter's story. That's because it's Layers of Fear 2, reworked so that it fits in the framing device of the writer's story, which ties everything together. The actor's story brings a new interpretation to the concept of layered fear. Where the painter explored a very literal laying using paint, the actor explores that layered character. In this game, an actor can't fully know themselves because their true identity is lost under the layers of character. The game commands you to shape this character, but it gives you very few options for actually developing their personality, leaving you feeling like you've got a blank canvas. And because I wasn't drawn to the actor's story through their character, I had less of a compulsion to keep going with the narrative there was a missed opportunity here to set the actor's story in old Hollywood rather than on a sinking ship. The narrative riffs on classic films without developing an identity of its own, leaving the player to meander down corridors without a definitive purpose. At times I didn't understand the point of the puzzles. In chapter 2 the overbearing director commanded me to steal food from a dog, but the controls made it impossible to understand what I was doing wrong or right. 
A child lambasted me for failing to steal the food, but I didn't actually know why I needed it in the first place. And this confusion all stems from a lack of clarity in the character's motivation. But that's acting, I suppose. The writer's story is used to link all these tales together, but it feels like a contrived way to tie two disparate games into one, which is a shame because I loved the concept of a black horror writer invited to write a novel in a sinister lighthouse in the mid 20th century. This was a great game idea. I wanted to see this game develop more fully because the unnamed narrator drew me in with her determination from the opening scene. I wanted to know why she was fighting, why she was here, what was the hidden reason for her going to the lighthouse. What all these stories have in common are the game mechanics. And some critics would compare Layers of Fear to a walking simulator, although I like to think of it more as an interactive escape room. Although there are narrative choices through the chapters and there are alternate endings, the scenarios are fairly linear in how you'll progress through the level. You'll find yourself traversing corridors, looking for an open door, following the flickering lights through large spaces, or simply walking in circles for effect. Many of these levels contain simple puzzles, such as finding the combination to a lock, or manipulating the space by moving objects. The more surreal puzzles are the most impressive. At several points in the painter's story, you're required to change perspective through a series of frames. And these puzzles are as original as they are trippy. The track-like nature of the game becomes more apparent in the final note, the story of the painter's musician wife. Although looping through the same passage simulates the trapped mental state of the character, it becomes tedious after several turns. Comparing all the scenarios together, it seems that the masterpiece was the most developed and thought out, and the additional stories lack the finesse that's present in the first game. In each level, you get a torture lantern to banish oily swirls of evil thoughts or freeze the spirits which pursue you through the levels. It's a fairly basic mechanic, but it's developed to much better effect in the actor's story, where the torch is used to animate mannequins to assist you along the way. There's also some jankiness to playing Layers of Fear on a console. Getting used to opening and closing doors with R2 takes effort, and sometimes this can be a slow process at critical points, like when you're trying to escape from the various spectral figures in the game. If you pick anything up during the overhead narration, the object's audio cancels out the story audio. But the sound is one of the highlights of the game. The info screen urges you to play with headphones on and I'd encourage you to do so. Having the sound up close and personal gives an extra level to the game's creep factor and I don't think the game would be as strong without this audio. The enemies whoosh by as they sneak up behind you, children chatter in the walls and you can't find where they are and the broken lights smash as you walk past. And this sound effect is overused a little bit in the game, but it does significantly contribute to the chilling nature of the story. Anyone with an interest in horror video games would do well to play through the painter's story. To understand how a sinister narrative can be told through sound, objects and environment design. But the stories that follow don't hold up to the original. In the end, the remastered package is too lengthy and repetitive Better to play the conglomerate of layers of fear in pieces, much like the torn artwork that haunts the characters within. I'm Kat Clay. If you liked this video, you want more video game reviews of horror games, Lovecraftian tabletop role-playing games, and just plain old nerd stuff, do hit that subscribe button. And thanks for watching.